tips, you'll basically see the spark. So what you got here is you got power. This this distributor is grounded by default, even though you got a B plus down there like that. Now why is that spark happening? Rotation. Rotation. How does rotation make a spark? No, right. This is what you're here to learn. See what I'm saying? There's some things that you're not going to know all the time. But what you got right here is you got a set of points. You know what I mean? Uh, a set of points that are break, making and breaking. Whenever I, whenever I got this thing right there, see, you can see those points making and breaking, right? Yeah. The uh, the uh, the tent slide ain't working. Like, Not even on the battery. Not even on the battery. All right, fix it. I know what's wrong with it. Oh, see yeah. if it's got a bad bulb. Take the bulb out of it. You took the bat the bulb to power and ground with jumper wire. See if the bulb's bad. If the bulb's bad, I'll give you another bulb. Don't whine about the light not working. Fix it. All right. See. And every time I turn that around, that's popping a spark. See there? Now how that happens is, what you got to do is this coil has got two sets of windings in it. It's got a small well, set of windings with not very many wraps coming off of here and coming to this one, it's got lots and lots and lots of wraps and there's a metal core in the middle of that. So whenever these points are closed, this is a saturated electrical field, gives it magnetism. So when you sweep magnetism across windings, and these, this is like this copper uh, magnet wire that's got shellac on it so it's not touching itself but it's only going around. It basically saturates the fine windings that are, that are millions of them and the coarse windings that are hooked between these two. And whenever you make them, to get, whenever you make that connection and that magnetism's there uh, and then you break it and the field collapses, you wind up with a spark, right? And the points are what's making it happen. All right, now then, Chrysler got smart. Now we're going to unhook this for now. Chrysler got smart, and they decided to go with electronic ignition. This is the electronic ignition it for is. Chrysler. And, uh, huh? It is. The bulb work? The bulb bed? No, the bulb bed. The bulb bed? Okay, that was really fast. Now bring the bulb over here, and let's test it over here. Here, test the bulb. How are you going to test the bulb? No. Hook this. Hook this to the spring. All right, let's hook this to right here. All right, now let's touch the tip of that bulb right there to this bolt right there. Look at there. We got a bulb that works. Yay! See, there's nothing wrong with that bulb. Keep working. See if it's the cord. Don't, don't condemn the bulb. That's like saying the car's out of gas because it won't start. Put your safety glasses back on. All right. Now then, what we got right here, we got the Chrysler ignition module. And watch how this is wired up. You see how that's wired up? Battery B plus goes to the top. So hook B plus to the top. All right. Now your coil minus, which is going to be right here. You still got to be. This is still got to be hooked to B plus too. So hook that to B plus. Taylor. All right. So disconnect this. You disconnect the one that's coming from a distributor because we're going to let it. We're going to fire it with something else. Wait a minute. We're not done yet. All right, now you see the other two right here. The, hook the negative side of the coil is going to go from here to right there. Can you make that happen? I'll hook it right there. All right, and go up there to the negative side of the coil. That wire should be just about long enough. All right, that's cool. Now then, make sure that these things aren't touching each other down there. And that one's okay. They'll be fine. All right, now then, what we're going to do, see down here on the bottom? Mr. Richard, can yeah. you get Tyler in here or something? See that? Watch what's happening. Uh, tell Tyler I said to come here. Tell Tyler I said to come here. See that? All right, that right there is, uh, now this is firing. Now basically you had a reluctor in the distributor similar to that right there in the crossroad distributor. As a matter of fact, let's do this. Let's take the purple wire and the uh, orange wire and connect those to these two pins right there. I'm going to let you do that now. Will I reach? Hook it to one and hook it to the other one. 
we're going to use a Ford distributor to fire a Chrysler ignition module. Will that reach? Mm -hmm. Hook your other one up like that. Coming from that uh, reluctor right there is firing that ignition coil using that module right there. So a Ford module will fire, I mean a Ford distributor will fire a Chrysler module. Isn't that interesting? Did you expect that? You didn't expect that, did you? Mm -mm. All right then, so that's pretty cool. Now let's take this right here and let, now this won't really work that well because the little reluctor wheel on a Chrysler one is real sharp. Now, I've actually done this before on a 74 Ford pickup I had. I put, one, I put a distributor like this and I put a module like that. And the problem with it was I had to retard the timing to get it to start and then advance it by hand before it would run right. So that really won't work on a vehicle, but you can demonstrate the operation of the ignition system. Unhook these two from here. And now connect those to the purple and the orange on that one. Make sure you're hooking the purple to purple and orange to orange now because it's important. Are you hooking purple to purple and orange to orange? You are, aren't you? Mm -hmm. That looks pretty good. All right, now get rid of this right here. This one right here goes to the green one. The green wire in that connector is going to go to the green wire. I mean, you got to hook it to the to the wire. All right, now this one here, that's going to hook to that red wire. Fix that, fix that alligator clip. I don't like that. Pinch it and you got to pinch it, pinch it and hold it open. Hold your hold it like that. No, I mean no. I mean hold it just like you started to grab it right there like that. Pinch it like this. And then hold it open. Hold it, hold it, hold it just like that. And I'll put your boot back on it. That's good. All right. Now then, put that to your red one. Okay. So think about what we got. What we've got is we got power coming here to the call. Right here, we got power coming to the call from the B plus terminal, and we basically are going through a current limiting resistor right there, which is basically getting pretty hot right now. Which that's what that's what resistors do. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see, I think we may have, we may already have a ground here, but there's basically a ground that's supposed to be connected to that one. Let's see if it'll fire the coil. Turn that distributor again. It didn't, did it? The reason it didn't fire the coil is you've got to connect a ground to that black one. You've got to have one more jumper wire to connect the ground to the black one. All right, now try it. All right, see now that you got that ground. Remember that the ground actually originates from that screw right in there. Wait a minute. From that screw right there. And it comes out through this black wire and it goes down here and it goes to this black one. And it, you use this module uses that ground to fire this coil. You got it? Okay, now what we're going to do now is we're going to take all those jumper wires off of there. I don't just grab them by the wire and snatch them off. You squeeze the alligator clip and unhook them. Unhook that one. Unhook that one. We're, got, we're through using that coil. We're going to go from this oil-filled coil. See, if we actually ground a hole in that coil, oil would run out of it. And the oil is very, very, very poison. So don't ever get any of that oil on yourself, right? So that's really it's not good stuff. Okay, the next ignition system we're going to play around with here is going to be, and that right there was 74 to 84 Ford Duraspark more or less. Okay, so what I'm going to do right here, you see this little terminal right here mm -hmm. on this 94 or uh, late 90s ignition or the early 90s ignition GM coil and module? That's what this next deal is. Hook power to right here. Bring me some power to that. You got power right here. Just hook it right there. Alright, now do you know what you're going to do to fire that one? You don't need another wire. Just put that wire down. Put that wire down. Alright. Lick your finger. Touch this. All right, with your other finger, lick your other finger, and tap those. Yeah, why is that doing that? Yeah. Huh? Power it, traveling. It thinks it's carrying, power is traveling through your body. It's going there. Now grab that distributor right down there, and very gently hold that in your hand, and plug it in right there. Plug this in right there. Plug that in. All right, now turn. Now hold that distributor one hand. Turn it with the other. Now turn it. It's just stiff, but turn it. Now I mean turn the. Yeah, turn the middle of it. See that? When you're turning that distributor there, 
that same kind of pickup coil deal is very similar to this over here is firing that coil. This is an E-core coil. This coil right here can handle a dead short in the ground for a little while. If this one here ever has a dead short in the ground for longer than a very brief period of time, like a half a second, it will burn that coil completely up. This is an E-core potted ignition coil. And this is the more common kind of coils that we had uh, after these coils started going away. But Chrysler stuck with these coils a long time. All right, so unplug that, put that back down there on the bottom. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go with this ignition system right here. Now this is Ford's thick film ignition system. And we're going to go ahead and just let this one fire some spark plugs. I had to have some eye candy here to fill up the middle of the, the thing, so I put some new spark plugs in there. And uh, They're all grounded now. There's a ground that's actually grounding the shell on these plugs. So how are we going to make those spark plugs fire? What are we going to hook up? To begin with, however you do it, you may have to hook up multiple jumper wires together for length. You're going to have to hook this right here. See that? You're going to have to hook that coil that to power, and you're going to hook power right here. And then you're going to have to hook this part of your coil to the other side. In other words, where it says coil, that's got to go to the other side. Now PIP stands for profile ignition pickup. Spout stands for spark output. That's where the connector is. You unplug and set your timing. IDM is ignition diagnostic monitor. And basically that's like whenever the PCM is making sure the coil is firing. Then you got power, you got coil. Now some of them use a, a start uh, right here, but this one here we're going to go with just power, coil, and ground. So basically the ground is already there because it's grounded to, you know, it gets its ground from this bolt right here on the and the, I basically have this grounded already by virtue of the mount on the board. So basically, put me some power here and put me some power there. Let's do that first. Okay, now then we're going to put, we're going to hook from the coil to the coil. What you need, Bill? What part of this brake line am I building? Uh, like you know there's a brake line that's going over to the, which, which tire do you have off? Left side. Left. There's a brake line going to that master, that wheel cylinder. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, that wheel cylinder, over to the. There's a little block on top of the rear end. Take that brake line off, and bring it to me and show it to me in your hand. And make sure you wear your safety glasses. Uh -huh. All right, do it. All right, see here. All right, so now you got everything that you need right there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to reach behind the board and turn that distributor and see if we're firing spark plugs. We're not, are we? Why are we not firing spark plugs? What do you think the problem is? We got nothing on some power. Uh, yeah, we got to have some power going to that module. Our module's not powered up. So you can just basically borrow some power from here and take it over there. Borrow power there, take it over there. There you go. All right, now then, let's see if we're firing them. All right, switch off the light so we can watch them fire. All right, fire them. All right, yeah, turn the thing as fast as you can. You notice it's firing them in order, too, okay? So basically, all right, what we're going to do here, all right, switch it off. What we're going to do here is we're going to see if we can take my pocket screwdriver, and we're going to take that screw off. We're going to take that screw out right there. All right. Okay, now then, uh, you need to build another one just like it, don't you? Yes. All right, so you have your double flare stuff? Now the, the brake line that you built the other day, you know what I mean? Yeah. Since you built a brake line the other day will suffice. So put that one back on there and make sure it's got good brake pedal. You may have to bleed the brakes now. Just go ahead and put that one back on there. Because you already built a brake line the other day. Okay? Not really. Yeah, you did. Well, you basically did because you double flared it. And all you got to know how is just to, to bend it so that it'll fit and go in there. So uh, I'm going to make it difficult for you to put back on because by bending it out of shape. Would that be okay? Not really. Okay, we'll put it back on there. All right, you see this right here? Watch what's going on. Uh, see this right here? Mm -hmm. Now, when you turn this, you this is going to fire because every time that little vein goes in between this, see there's a little magnet right there and a little electronic uh, switching device that every time that magnetic field is interrupted away from it or, or shunted away from it by these, you're basically going to actually cause a switch in here that's going to tell this to fire the coil. Now there is a tool that I built one time and let's look over here and I'll show it to you. I built this tool long years ago when I was at the Ford place. All right, now this is right here. It looks kind of crappy because I built it out of junk. Uh, but basically what I did was 
I took a connector right here and I wired it up to the top of one of these modules. I put a heat sink on it because this module gets really hot when it's firing a coil. And then I would plug this into the wire harness on the car and I would plug that in to the module on the car and I could actually fire the, you know, use this to start the car. If this, and I also had an LED in there that you can barely see there so that you, I could tell if the stator was putting out, uh, which basically this stator signal right here, see this blue wire? This goes to the engine controller and tells the engine controller how often to fire the, the injectors. Now the injector pulse is modified by the engine coolant temperature sensor and all that sort of stuff. But the long and the short of it is, this right here, this sorts out the spark. So the coil is firing in here and this happens to be pointing at the right place because you got the distributor angled right and you got the uh, stuff right. Okay, let's go ahead and put that back on there. Now then, what I'm going to have you do, let's go ahead, uh oh, give me that screwdriver I dropped. Now what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you to disconnect all this stuff you just connected. And what we're going to do down here, we've got a PCM over here, and we've got a little wheel that I fixed up with a crank sensor. The crank sensor is already wired up to the PCM, you might notice. And so basically, uh, your ignition coil here, you're going to fire this coil. So basically, I need power here. And follow these words, see coil 1, 2, and 3, coil 1, 2, and 3, uh, put them in that order. In other words, you're going to jump from, what, what are you going over here for? What are you doing here? Oh, you're putting power there. Okay, that's good. All right, now don't let these wires touch each other, because if you do, you may have destroy something. You got me? You don't mm -hmm. want to destroy anything. Uh, so coil 1, 2, and 3, and then you're going to put 12 volt right here, and you're going to put a ground right there. All right. And when you get through with that, we're going to watch that fire. Talk to me, guys. What you doing? What you need over there? I'm trying to figure out what he has, either what he has that I don't, or what I finished that he still has. Really? Okay. Because uh, I only have two worksheets. Yeah. All right. What do you, do you have? Does he have, does he have those same two? Oh, by the way, yeah, I, uh, yeah, he was here for this, but you never signed his. Yeah. I just didn't write anything. Did down. you fill it out? There was really and truly nothing to fill out. Other than well, there's a line or two there on it, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Then you have to write down your voltage drop numbers and all that stuff? I mean, when we're done, none of it's here, none of it's more. I want to write everything down. Well, that, well, you just want me to sign it without you filling no, out? I mean, I was going to fill it out. I will fill it out then. I'll fill it out and I'll sign it. How about that? That sound good? It's I fine. remember you were there. I, we were there. All right, how are we doing? All right. All right, get over here and interface with those guys and find something you can do to stay busy. The big sign above the coffee table out there says, don't waste time, live it, live it, learn it. All right, now then, are you ready? You ready to try it? Can you push the button? All right, for some reason, you don't have any... Wait a minute, what are you doing here? Let's see, you got good power there. You got to have a ground here, buddy. You got no ground. When you put a ground there, it'll work. Yep. All right. We will sign that. Positive side voltage drop, negative side voltage drop. What was that? You remember? Uh, three. Oh, look at here. So we're spinning that. We basically got some coal fire in here. I basically pointed these toward each other. All right, now stop it for a second. Okay. All right, let's. Let's turn it. Now watch, wait a minute, I'm going to show you something. All right, as I turn this, let's see. Notice that it doesn't start firing until after it has seen that empty tooth. Now put that belt back on there. All right, now the only thing I don't have on here is call on, I mean, is call on plugs. 